bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. A major blow for the Northern Island of Bimini as the loan banking facility brings to an end decades of service to that island. Joan Davis Roll reports. The closure of the Royal Bank of Canada on the island of Bimini Wednesday, though anticipated, not sitting well with Biminites. Its closure marks the end of the island's only banking service for more than 50 years. Reports from the Northern Ireland indicate that scores of residents waited in line outside the bank on its final day of operations, seeking to tie up last-minute business. ZNS News spoke via telephone with Bimini's Chief Counselor Robbie Smith about the RBC pullout. Well, the Biminites were lined up from around 8 this morning to the Royal Bank. Actually, it opened up at 9 and the line was ridiculous is the line was run quite a ways back and you know it's uh, actually a sad day today in Bimini to see uh, the dollars will be closed at RBC and um, a lot of people say they were moving forward of trying to get their money out of all of the bank. Smith says that the timing of the bank's closure is particularly baffling for residents as it comes as that Northern Ireland is experiencing unprecedented growth and development. Yeah, I see a lot of tourists go there and use the ATM and the ATM machine will be pulling out of the building as well. So it's it's still putting us in a in a situation where at least, you know, you could go down there with your ATM card and who has ATM card and go to the ATM machine but uh debit card but with the machine going it's like, you know, you everybody is stranded so it's like you know, what do we do next? Get on a plane and fly to Freeport or fly to Nassau? The bank's closure, he says, also stands to have a negative impact on that island in more ways than one. You have to look out for the elderly people and for them to be going down to the bank and some of them don't use no ATM card, so it's, they have to go inside the bank. So it's, 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 it's a trying time right now. I think security got to be tightened up now and I think i just hoping it don't have to keep the police are too busy and all of that. Meanwhile, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Peter Turnquist, says the government is working to remedy the situation, but he notes that the move by RBC represents a change in the banking sector that is technologically driven. Meantime, the Bank of the Bahamas is making preparations to provide service on that Northern Ireland as a loan commercial bank. Smith is, among others, assisting BOB officials with this process. Joan Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. The Office of the Prime Minister, Grant Bahama, along with a number of corporate entities, have come together to bring some economic stimulus and entertainment to the Port Lucaya marketplace. A Taste of Port Lucaya is a new initiative that will launch tomorrow, August 3rd, and it is expected to be fun for the whole family. As the marketplace prepares for this big event, our Italia Hall is live in the marketplace with a taste of what will happen tomorrow at A Taste of Port Lucaya. Thanks, Megan. Here I am in the Port Lucaya Marketplace, and tomorrow night, at the same time, this place is expected to be buzzing with entertainment as the Office of the Prime Minister in Grand Bahama, along with other industry partners, come together to host a Taste of Port Lucaya. And that's a cultural event that is expected to boost the economy of Grand Bahama. And here I have with me the Honorable Quasi Thompson. And Minister Thompson, I understand that you are the mastermind behind this project. Tell us a little bit with you. The idea came from and what can persons expect? Well, you know, the government has as its mandate to revitalize Grand Bahama. One of the big things that we must do uh, is to open the hotels across the street and the government is urgently working on that as the Prime Minister indicated. But we know the vendors in Port Lucaya are challenged and so one of the things that we wanted to do was to bring economic activity to the Port Lucaya marketplace and that's why we came up with a taste for Grand Bahama, a taste for Port Lucaya. And so it is really a cultural event. We're celebrating our culture, but more importantly, we are supporting the vendors here in Port Lucaya. So we're inviting everyone to come down tomorrow night. Uh, it's uh, Thursday night. It's on the uh, 3rd of, uh, of uh, uh, August. We want you to come support your vendors. We have uh, all of the foods that's here, all of the restaurants that's here. We're going to have the cultural activities that's here. We want to thank our partners, the Port Authority, the Ministry of Tourism, BTC, the Grand Bahama Tourism Board. Uh, but more importantly, we want to bring some economic 
activity here to the Port Lucayo marketplace to support our vendors here in Port Lucayo. And this event won't just be held tomorrow night, there will be other nights as well. Absolutely, this is just the kickoff night. And so for this Thursday, as well as every other Friday for the next two months, uh, this is going to be happening here in the Port Lucaya marketplace. We have our tourists that's coming. We have our locals that's coming. Really, we, we want to bring the life back uh, into Port Lucaya uh, so that we can bring some economic revitalization to Grand Bahama. And also I have with me Carmel Churchill from the Grand Bahama Island Tourism Board. Talk about what goes into preparing for events such as these in Grand Bahama each time. Well, good evening, Italia, and thank you so much for this opportunity. The Grand Bahama Island Tourism Board is actually really excited to partner with the Office of the Prime Minister on this particular event. Um, what happens is that when events like this take place, it gives us an opportunity to showcase our culture to our visitors that's coming to the island. So when we jump on board, we pull in all of our partners. We pull in our hoteliers, the transportation providers, the airline providers, and we get everyone on board to participate and really make it quite a phenomenal event. And I understand that persons from other islands, there's a special going on for them as well if they want to be a part of this. Indeed. The theme is follow the flamingos. So if you're in Abaco, you can fly Flamingo Air, staying at the Flamingo Bay Hotel for a wonderful price of $207 per person based on double occupancy. You can stay one night. And if you pay the, uh, the price of $242, you can stay two, four, uh, two nights here on Grand Bahama Island. So don't just come just for one night, but to move on and explore Grand Bahama Island because there's a lot of great deals available for you. Well, there you have it. Lots of food, lots of entertainment, specials for Bahamians around the Bahamas who want to be a part of this event. Back to you in the studio, Megan. Thanks, Italia. And as you've just heard, Port Lucaya is the place to be tomorrow night. Now, one of the partners for the Taste of Port Lucaya event is the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Senior Manager of Corporate Business Kim Miller is encouraging the entire family to come out and take part. She says that in order for the economic climate to improve, we must all do our part. A taste of Port Lakai is exactly what we needed this time. Entertainment coupled with shopping. We know that Port Lakai Marketplace is the ideal place on Grand Bahama Island to get that great mix of entertainment as well as shopping. So all we would like to do is to let you know that we're doing our parts as sponsors. You guys need to do your parts to come out and come out every single Friday that these events are going on. And bring your family, have dinner, have fun, get some shopping in there. And this is what we're going, this is all the things that's needed at this particular time to get our economy moving in the right direction, which is upward. BTC is also on board for the event. Vice President of the Northern Bahamas, Aldry Ferguson Mackey, says that the company is fully committed to improving the, com the communities in which they operate. We will be here. We'll provide the necessary support by way of our brand ambassador so that we can bring cultural entertainment. We'll have telecommunications. We'll make sure that we have our services out here and available to the guests on the, on the night of the event. And we'll make sure that we have all those special um, treats and all of those things that people come looking for. And yes, phone cards will be there and the phones will be there as well at special discounted offers. So again, um, we want to encourage the public to come out, um, get engaged. Uh, we can only do this if we work together and we all need to make sure that we take an active part in making Grand Bahama better. The Buddy Heel Dream Week was not just basketball, but also featured the NBA star reaching out to the residents of Grand Bahama. Ricardo Lightborn has more. NBA sensation Shivano Buddy Heel family and friends from Kansas, Oklahoma and Texas in a community effort with packages of grocery items distributed across the island of Grand Bahama. Buddy's passion touched the lives of residents and led him to the special mission. First stop was Igmar Rock, where the team walked through the community as Buddy greeted residents with a package and a smile. I know the hurricane has devastated everybody and like people have lost jobs, so uh, just trying to find a way to give back and uh, just you know, put a meal on somebody's table that could last them for at least couple, a week or two. I know I'm more fortunate now and more fortunate people that I go around, so there's somewhere to help people. I know I can't just go, go around and give everybody everybody money, but uh, I can help them in some way to uh, be a major impact. But he says his mother instilled in him from a little boy the importance of giving back. Then he jumped back on this opportunity to make sure that they deliver the items and it's a reality. A lot of people don't have a lot of, um, you have during the summer, you have a lot of kids, um, you know, their parents are out of, out of work. And a lot of kids I know during, during the summer, 
Sometimes my kids didn't have it, you know. Sometimes a tuna, a flour, flour, you could make pancakes, and that, hey, that took us a long way. So you giving back some, some groceries, you know, to help their parents in the summer, I think it's, it's, it's a good thing. 103-year-old Pine Hill resident Uncle Willie received a donation and a smile. Oh, yes, I eat that. I ain't gonna share no, with that nobody. <laughs> nobody. Look at the people, Lord. They look at the people, like glad to see them. Buddy friend Alan Blakedale calls it an honor to travel with Buddy, participating in the charitable event. Former Oklahoma Sooner teammate and friend Daniel Hopper says it's a humbling experience. You know, to come out here and see a man now that was grew up here as a young boy and go back and really connect with his community on, a, on all levels and then be able to contribute to that, not only just for things that are you know, material things, but also giving up his time and the energy and helping kids. And he does it with such energy. And then now, now being able to provide things that people actually need in their everyday life. It's just a real tremendous honor and privilege. He grew up here and now he's investing time back into where he came from. And if, if that's not real, I don't know what is, you know, uh, he's just helping out the people here and that's incredible. And it's, you know, he's, he's blessed and he knows it. And so, uh, he's blessing these people here, and that's great. Items were also distributed to residents in Hunters, Lewis Yard, and Pendis Point. Ricardo Lightwood, Zenith Network News. And now it is time to ask the doctor. Welcome. Rita emailed additional questions regarding lab studies. She asked, I just had my annual exam. How long will it take for my lab results to come back? Will I get a copy also? And what do all the results mean? For a blood test, one or two methods may be used. Your finger may be pricked by a lancet, which is a small needle for a small amount of blood. Or more commonly, blood from a vein on the inside of your arm is obtained by inserting a small needle. Blood flows from the vein through the needle and is collected in a syringe or a blood tube. For other specimens, such as urine, stool, or semen that can be collected at home, you will be instructed by your lab technician on how to collect them. Most laboratory test results can be provided in a few hours or within one to two days. However, there are some that take up to several days. A lab personnel will usually inform your doctor on the status of your test results, and he or she will be given an estimated time that they will be completed. Once complete, you may request a copy of your lab results from your doctor or the medical records department at the hospital. Test results can sometimes be abnormal for many reasons, so please discuss them with your doctor. I'm Dr. Mooney Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Stay with us, Ricardo Legborn is up next with a check on sports. 